Italians hate Jehovah's Witnesses? I don't know. <laughs> Italians hate all witnesses. Oh. <laughs> Okay, getting us not not, not, not Steve here. Harvey uh, quality, but we hope to honor the man. He was a, he was a treasure. All right, take it away. Cool. Are the mugs ready? Oh, great. Welcome to the LTG show. Rob Burke's 40th Pinball Expo. Yep, and he's done an amazing job. Oh, and uh, Rob Burke uh, wanted me to do a seminar this year, and I wasn't too wild about it. And then he pointed out that, you know, the seminar is a great way to meet women. So if there's any single women here tonight that like fat old broke guys, see me after the show. And uh, we should do the public service announcements. You know, you're partying at Expo, you're having a lot to drink, don't be out driving. Crash sites automatically become DUI checkpoints. And if you're driving down a sidewalk, uh, the Chicago police take a dim view of that. I call it profiling, but they will stop you. Oh, and uh, I forget, too, I wanted to mention Martin Ayab. One person that probably doesn't get the recognition he deserves that's been promoting and supporting pinball for forever. He's got pinballnews.com. On his own nickel, he runs that. He goes all over the world doing shows and tournaments and leagues. He's been in my business several times. And he's an outstanding man. I've, I've really admired him for years. Of course, I was institutionalized most of those years, too. But Anyway, welcome. And we do have mugs, and uh, usually we give them away if you got a really great question, but we decided to sell them this year. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So anyway, anybody got a really great question? Otherwise, this is going to degenerate really quick. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I saw him first. Wait, wait. I'm, I'm going to try and do the questions and then uh, answer them because sometimes the recording doesn't always pick up a question. So you got a mediocre question. Oh, okay. Mediocre Thanks, Jonathan. Question. I have a mediocre question. I, I hope you have the great answer. So for everybody who's not entirely familiar, SS Billiards, you've run it for decades. 52 years. That's phenomenal. Two two prongs. Is there is there a game that you've never owned there that you'd love to own? And second, what's the story for people that are not familiar behind the goose? Uh, a game I've never owned, but I'd like to own. Correct. Probably Pinball Circus. You know, we had brought one in uh, spring uh, 2006 Pinball Circus party at my event. And Martin Ayab, myself, Greg Chemnitz, and uh, Todd Anderson, Saturday night, worked until 8 in the morning, completely shopped it, had everything working, and we stored it till August until it went out to the Pinball Hall of Fame. But, yeah, all the work and everything I'd done. And we had offered to Steve Kordick to haul that around the country for him. And, uh, you know, because he wanted people to see it. But then, uh, you know, he loaned it to the Pinball Hall of Fame. And then sometime later, you know, his wife had passed. He was in declining health. His grandkids didn't want it. Ultimately, he sold it to Pinball Hall of Fame. So, Jackson, you got a mug? Oh, Nate, one, one thing, and two, before we get other questions, one thing I forgot to touch on, too, and I'm really sorry about this. Last year, a lady asked how to learn to fix pinball machines. I said, you blow shit up. And she asked again, I said, you blow shit up. I mean, we learn more from our mistakes and our successes. And I thought about that for a long time afterwards. And I really think down deep inside, she wasn't to learn to fix pinball machines. It was to learn to learn fix pinball machines. So here tonight, free of charge, I'm going to give via everybody in this room the three things you need to fix your average pinball repairs. Now, I'm not talking heavy-duty board repair work or anything else, but just the basics that will get you through 75% of your pinball problems. The first thing, get yourself some wire, get yourself a battery, get yourself a light bulb, make yourself a simple circuit like that light bulb. Once you, you do that successfully, now you know how a circuit works. Second thing, get yourself a meter. And there's so many resources now, Google, YouTube, everything else, and you can even find, if you get a, uh, any kind of meter, you'll probably find a YouTube video how to use it. Put it on ohms. Put the two probes together. See what the meter says. Then take one of your pieces of wire. Put the one probe on one end, one on the other end. Should say the same thing. Now you know how to check continuity. You have a coil that don't work, a switch don't work, a lamp don't work, anything. You know how to you know, start checking wiring, looking for breaks. Third thing is soldering. 
you know, take your wires again, splice a couple together, learn to heat a joint and flow solder. You know, get yourself a soldering iron, get lead solder so it's easy. And there's YouTubes on how to do this, but learn how to flow a joint and let the heat do the work. But those three things, you're going to be able to fix just about everything you ever run into, short of once you get uh, complicated stuff where you're going to like board repair, or you're going to need the right tools, the right equipment, the right ed education, and be smarter. But just your basic to get through stuff, those three things will help you learn a long way. So anyway, back to questions. Uh, hang on, John. we got a couple more in front of you. This gentleman right there. You. Going, going in. Uh, what's the most notable uh, thing that some uh, most notable? Uh, Come on, well, spit it out. You yeah. can <laughs> what's the most notable thing that someone asked if LTG stood for? I'm sorry. What? What's the, what's the most notable like guess someone had for what LTG oh, stands that, for? On Rec Games Pinball, quite a few times there'd be uh, there'd be you know 15, 20 uh, people responding. You know, little tiny gonads laws, love Thai girls, lost uh, the game. I mean, it just got, went on and on and on. I remember, I think it was, uh, oh, jeez, Chris Munson, I think, one time after about the fourth or fifth time, do we have to do this again? <laughs> but it just got a life of its own. And uh, sadly, and to this day, it still happens where people think I'm making fun of them, tell them to learn to Google. I mean, it goes back to 1975, you know, like 20, 30 years before Google. But there's been people actually get pissed and have left uh, Rec Games Pinball or left the hobby and stuff because they think I'm making fun of them and not. <laughs> but once once they get pissed, there's just no way you're explaining your way out of that. Did you have a question back there, sir? Oh, wait, did you give him a mug? Okay. Oh. Who asked about the goose? I'm not what? I'm Greg. Oh. Oh, fuck, boy, this didn't take long to go to shit. <laughs> oh, say one thing, since Martin's recording this, you know, no customers swearing or anything, you really got to watch your fucking mouths here tonight. So anyway, what was your goose question? From my video game initials. Where did the goose come from? Well, the, that was, uh, you know, it became from the, the initials, the LTG. And many times people are trying to guess what it meant for. And uh, the winter of 2000, 2001, I had some older guys shooting pool, and I don't know what they were doing one day. One guy yells across the room, let loose the ducks! I'm like, what the fuck? Well, just then, David Jersick here in Chicago would post on Red Games Pinball. It stands for Launch Those Geese. And I thought, shit, that ain't bad. First pinball party I had March 2nd, 2001 was the launch of those geese uh, pinball party. Yeah, we had mugs made, everything else. I was, well, thank you. And it's just, I've, I've learned in my life not to question stuff, not to wonder how we get there. Just, you know, go with it. That's why I was looking for kiss updates in 97. And I ended up in Kiev. I mean, just. <laughs> uh, oh, she's got. Well, now you got a great souvenir, lady. You can you. take that home. That's yeah. even better than these cheap mugs. Now I'm, that, so, I'm sorry, we got to hit the person with the mug. We'll get to you eventually. Now that you're doing support, well, you've done it before, but for multiple companies, do you tend to get the same types of questions, or does it really differ depending on the company? Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of them are similar. In fact, I've uh, like adjusting some things, like uh, pop bumper switches, sling slingshot switches. I finally, instead of typing it out every time, I <laughs> just, you know, put a, send them an email, send it to myself so I can just copy and paste it from there. But, you know, a lot of first time buyers, you do get some of the similarities, you know, that when I'm playing my game and now the slingshots are firing all the time on their own or the pop bumpers are, you know, it's generally, you know, you run into some things like that quite frequently. And then typically, too, people that are new to pinball, the first thing, is it a ROM issue? Eh, probably not, but... <laughs> But you can go ahead and tear your boards apart and you want to see, but eventually you get back to the original problem and try and fix that. Did you give her a mug? Yep. Thank you. I'm sorry you don't get to keep the microphone, lady. It's not mine. If it's mine or if it's Martin's, we'd have given it to you. But you know how that Jonathan gets with his stuff. So there was a question here. Right, right there. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, my question is, uh, do you have more or less number of pinball machines on the floor there now versus the day you first opened? Oh, way more. There was six there. Uh, my mother and I bought the business September of 72 and September 20th. And there, she had an operator there. She couldn't buy her own games. And uh, the operator had six pinball machines. You know, the picture on my website uh, is a shot from the spring of 73, and you can see them. And then I bought out my mother's interest in February of 79, and then I bought my own equipment. Uh, 2001... Uh, Grand Slam, Jungle, uh, Jungle Lord, I think, or Jungle King, uh, Superstar, Foursquare. There was a Pong sitting there too. That was kind of the uh, omen of the future to come. Yeah, and there's probably there's more in that picture. I just don't remember offhand. Yeah, you, know, you get old, you forget shit, and <laughs> I don't understand it, but. Well, we'll get to you a little bit here, lady, because we got to send Jonathan the whole way back there. And he's kind of old. He don't move real fast. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I, had, uh, I had one of those original Wazes, and we actually spent a lot of time communicating with email at the time. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Do we get it going? Oh, absolutely. That's two I got right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, the the solution ended up replacing the lighting system, which I did, and it's been rock solid ever since. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, but uh, how did you get involved in all that? With uh, JJ. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's one of those uh, crazy little things. Uh, one, uh, uh, there's a, I think it's inactive now. I don't know if anybody posts on it anymore. There was a Wizard of Oz Google forum, and he had posted one evening that, you know, we need a guy for tech support. And uh, I was within two seconds, me, 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 take me. And then I realized he wanted somebody within the company. And unfortunately, by the time I went and stuck my nose in there, the river was running. You couldn't slow it down. There must have been 20, 30 posts. Yeah, get Lloyd. Lloyd's great. Blah, 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 blah. And I even went in there and apologized. I said, you know, please, I'll let everybody astray here, you know. See, Jack could put me in that forum to help people. And uh, I, I said, I, I apologize. I didn't realize Jack wanted somebody within a company, and he's got to do what, you know, he wants to do. And don't worry. I'll still try and help where I can. Well, Jack called me the next day and basically brought me on board until, you know, when he got rid of me, but... Nah, don't cry. You know, to me, it was kind of a relief because probably three-fourths of the time I spend on tech support was wasted with that. I'm sorry? Well, initially, probably all of them. <laughs> I mean, I was getting calls from other countries and all kinds of stuff. And it was fun times, but, you know, times changed. But, see, Rick uh, with Bay Area Amusements wanted me to help on his forum, and that, which merged in a planetary pinball supply, which became the remakes, which at the time I thought, well, oh, this could be a problem because I'm with Jersey Jack now. But at that time, Pinball Sales was a distributor for uh, the remakes. So I thought, great, no problem. And then, of course, uh, earlier this year, American Pinball brought me on board because, you know, not doing the Jersey Jack thing anymore freed up a hell of a lot of time for me. And I'm sitting at work bored, uh, you know, if it's not busy, you know, that's usually when I'm doing tech support. You know, it gives me something to do and keeps me from causing grief. Not, not that I've ever posted anything bad on Pinside or anything, but, yeah. Hey, just because I told one guy on Tuesday to fuck off, I mean, just... <laughs> Yes, sir. So with with all the machines you've worked on in your life, are there any that have just had some weird one-off feature? Oh, fuck did I have one recently. Like, who who designed this crap? Or, oh, know? yeah, there was one. Uh, God, I forget the name. It was, uh, I think we had the uh, Mayday uh, tournament that Fred uh, Richardson ran and had trouble with the pinball in the back, and the, the name's escaping me right now. But I even had Lyman Sheets helping me. 
because I'm back there kicking the shit out of the bottom of the machine. I was pissed. I'm, I'm going to look at the design credits. I'm like, who the hell designed this piece of shit? I want to fucking gut him. And Lyman comes back, and he's like, well, and I told him, and he's, he looks over, and he says, well, that's not right. <laughs> well, that's what I'm getting at. Somebody was really had their head up their ass on this one. But we got it, whatever was wrong, we, you know, we fixed it and stuff. But that that was memorable. Most recent one I had that drove me, Dan, Dan Hansen's a really good tech in the area. And uh, I even called him in and helped me twice, you know, to see, you know, sometimes an extra set of eyes. I'm not naive and think I know everything. You know, what am I missing here? And my Hobbit was driving me nuts for months. You know, there's seven switches, gray wire, black stripe in the back right corner, the captive ball switch, the three pop bumpers, a couple of lane switches, a switch behind the, the rubber ring. And they would just quit. And, I mean, I went through everything. And every time I touched it, it worked for a while, and then it quit. And I brought Dan in, and uh, Dan tried to, he wanted to remove the captive ball target and have a look at it. We couldn't get it out. Well, there was a ball stuck behind it. And we figured it shortened the switch out. And, excuse me, that was probably in there from when the game was manufactured. I mean, it just took that many years to, you know, cause problems, took that out. Again, it worked for a few days. Well, then the real captive ball got back there somehow which now I've limited the plastic uh, above that. You know, it's got to have a little bit of room so the ball rolls, but not enough that the ball flies. And uh, But anyway, they, once again, I got that out of there, worked for a few days, quit, and then Dan uh, called him in again, resoldered some wires, checked every connection from the metal box back, I mean, everything. And, of course, then it's working. You know, within two, three days, it quits working again. I'm like, and if, you know, it's like, you know, I've, you, pin, pinball machines get a personality. Well, games get a personality. Like if you had five Pac-Men in a row, all the money's going to be in one. It might not play the best. It might not look the best, but people love it. And right now, my Hobbit's always been like that, and my Walking Dead is like that, and my original Medieval Madness is like that. People come just for them. If I mean, if this had been any other game, I would have probably got rid of it a long time ago with this crap going on. But anyway... Uh, once again, they weren't working. I thought, well, you know, Dan had checked the connectors at the outside of the box and everything. I thought, I'm going to go inside and be sure the I.O. board, uh, J202 up on front, if you're in the front of the game, it's uh, the front of the I.O. board. See what the hell that connector's doing. Maybe it's come loose or something. I open it up and I the, take the metal cover off, open it all up. In the first fourth of the I.O. board, there's coil stop and flipper dust all over it. And that shit conducts electricity. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. You know, I get a, you know, canned air, blow it all out of there, clean it off. It's been working perfect ever since. That one really drove me nuts. So the last thing I suspected, because that box is, there's no real way to, for that to get in there. You know, there's no fans on the back of the box. Or anything. Uh, how the hell is this getting in there? But it was getting in there. And I posted that on uh, Pinside, too, because the Wizard of Oz is our hobbits with those boards on the bottom. You know, if you start having weird crap, it's worth taking a look at that I.O. board to see if there's crab on it. Uh, wait a second, he's, Jonathan's got somebody with the, hey, Jonathan, do we get you a mug? How much are they? 20 bucks. Can't afford that. 44.95. Now, Jackson, you want to run back and give him a mug? But we gave Martin one, and I forgot John, Jonathan's done the pinball magazine and done a lot to promote and support pinball for years, too, and Really a great guy. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. She, she left the game, and then I get back to the front. You know, miss, that isn't my fault. I was not ignoring you on purpose. Jonathan, John, Jonathan's, Jonathan's got an aversion to ladies wearing blue. Oh, that's a lie. So anyway, somebody's got the microphone. Yes, sir. Hey. So first off, Thanks for sticking around. I know the last panel went very, very long. I uh, appreciate you hanging out. So when you walk into Edsys Billiard, you see two primary pieces to the business. You see the pinball and you see the billiards, right? Are there any major pros and cons to each of those facets you can think of? Is there one area that the pinballers are just way better with, way worse with, and vice versa for billiards? No, you're dealing with the you know the general public. I mean, it goes both ways. And you know, in the ups and downs of the industry, I remember when the video fad flopped. I was thank God I got pool tables. They were paying my rent.
you're wrong. Yeah, because, you know, the pull rates have not kept up with uh, everything else, the costs going up. Yeah, wait wait a second. We got this lady in back, and she's just been dying. She wants to meet me. So bring her up here, and let's give her a mug. Yes, yes, miss. How can we help you? Oh, you just came for the mug. You didn't have a question. That's okay. Oh, okay. I don't want to see these things on eBay either. So, uh, first of all, I'm honored to have asked such a, a memorable question last year. Because oh, that was you that wanted to learn? Yeah. I felt so bad about that because, like I say, when I thought it through, like I say, I thought, you know, maybe she's meaning to learn to learn, not just learn to fix film walls, but to learn how to learn to fix them. Well, okay, so first of all, the first three things you mentioned, I already know how to do those. I'm actually an electrical engineer. Well, you're already so smarter than me. You want a job with Chicago Gaming? <laughs> I just live here, so. Oh. Are you trying to get rid of it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, one of the things you said is, well, you got to, like, blow a bunch of things up, and I don't really want to blow up our game. So, like, how do, <laughs> how do, I, how do I learn to, to fix things? without actually making our game worse. Well, that, that's a tough one. I mean, I myself uh, blew up four boards, uh, driver boards on a bride of Pinbot in one setting. Eventually you learn to put the connectors where they belong, but it takes a few tries. <laughs> but some of the big things is you'll pay, pay close attention to what you're messing with. You know, it, obviously uh, your driver board uh, is driving coils and uh, they're 50 volts, which they are usually coming out at about 70, not under load. You know, if you're working on other stuff, switches, uh, lamps, you know, you, you, you understand where the high power is coming from, stay away from that. And, you know, don't be grabbing a, you know, a coil and grabbing a rail because that ca capacitor discharges. You know, you're the one that gets it, not the machine. But the big thing is just to be kind of conscious, you know, don't drop a tool on a board. You know, like I say, learn where the high power sections are of a game. And, uh, you know, and crap can still happen. But how much do you, uh, I mean, when you're actually working on them, you you actually have them plugged in? I mean, I, I, you shouldn't. No, I, I, I well, I, yeah, no, I'm you should, you should have them plugged in so they're grounded. Yeah. You should have it turned off so you don't do right. bad things. Right. Okay. I always leave them turned on unless I'm uh, soldering or something, but. Okay. But, you know, I've got, uh, let's see, 66 years at this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, scrubbing play fields when it's four years old. And do you, do you find that the the newer machines are easier or harder to work on? Than it's never changed. Time? You know, back when they went from mechanical to electrical, at the schools they were telling us, now with the solid state, it's going to cure all the problems. Yeah. I'm like, you're fucking kidding me. I said, you know, it's still a pinball under there. You're just adding boards to it. So nothing's changed. I mean, they still from the mechanical days to the solid state days. There's still a pinball machine underneath there. Yeah. Even Doug Score, uh, when I was down in Texas uh, for Chicago Gaming the first time for them, I was talking to Doug Score about that because I told him I don't adapt to the new technology well, and he's like, "Look at this." I said, "There's still a pinball under there. That's where I'm good at. You know, there's still a pinball under there. It doesn't matter what error or anything else. You're plugging it into an outlet. There's a pinball under there." Did that help you a little better? Yeah. And I'm sorry I was short last year because, like I say, because I was honest, we learn more by our mistakes. Sure. No, it I, takes I, me I, longer than most. I've blown up more stuff than the average person. but. <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to avoid. So. Yeah, but, you know, if it happens, you know, your gut, you'll gut your way through it and you won't do it again. Well, that's Oh, you true. get to keep that. Jonathan gave that to you. I give out mugs. Jonathan gives out these really cool microphones. <laughs> I keep getting them back. Add one thing? Uh-oh. Hmm. But leave it plugged in so you and the game are grounded. Like, I've destroyed, like, stern node boards by not turning power off. That's easy. Turn your goddamn board off. Like, and every, every time you see on Pinsight or anywhere, somebody will be talking that, I was just putting some LEDs in and now it's doing all this stuff. Were you doing it with the power on? Yeah. 
Well, now you learned. But be sure it's plugged in so things are grounded. Ah, the smoke test. Yeah, and if uh, you know if you're working on a game and other people have access to it and you don't want it turned on, pull the main fuse. Yep, I was working on an eight ball deluxe that I'd uh, restored some years ago and uh, had some problems with it, and I had it pulled to the side and I had it turned off, and yeah, somebody came by and turned it on for me, blew up all kinds of happy crap. <laughs> oh, and one other thing too, if you're putting a power cord on a game, you know, and you cut the old cord off and put the new one in, be sure you unplug the old one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I blew a really cool pair of, uh, you know, wire cutters. Just boom. <laughs> Burned uh, two holes in them. They weren't wire cutters anymore. Yes, sir. I've got an unrelated two-parter. Uh, first one is, what's the best earner as far as pinball game goes that you've had since you've opened the shop? And uh, Not not print pinball. Asteroids and uh, a after Afterburner Deluxe to sit down. If you were to say that a pinball game was a good earner, which one would it be? Hmm. I don't have an Elton John. Boy, that's a good question. Let me think on that a little bit, and I'll try and get back to you here in a few minutes. And the second one is, what do you think of your godfather? My godfather? I loved it. You know, my pirates, a lot of people are down on, not locally. I've only had two people locally piss. I got rid of my uh, pirates LE. It, it just wasn't cutting it. And I was able to make an excellent trade uh, for a Godfather uh, Collector Edition, and uh, that exceeded my expectations. You know, a lot of people had said, well, you could have sold your game for more. Well, yeah, Mike Nogle had it for sale for 19 and a half, and it took him two or three months to sell it. So how much more could I have got? And then I got to pay capital gains on it. I wouldn't have enough money left to buy a Godfather Premium. And now the Godfather Collector Edition, now I left the lions out there in my showcase because you can knock them off when you're playing. If I go to the bathroom, somebody's got to take them. But uh, I put it, you know, you got the horse head shooter rod, and if I had it on the end, people would walk into it or hook their clothes on it. And uh, so I put it in the center. I thought, well, until uh, Pulp Fiction gets here, I'll put it in the center and then figure things out from there. Well, it's done too damn good. It far exceeded my expectations, so I don't want to move it. So now it's in the center of my front row. Still trying to think highest earning pinball. You know, and see, the problem with that, too, has been there's so many differences through the years. You know, quarter play, 50 cent play, 75 cent play, dollar play. I think, uh, you know, my all time gross thing would probably be my original medieval madness. Because that, well, I, like I say, some games get a personality, and that's one that, you know, bring people in. What the hell are you doing over there? Oh, okay. Um, hang, hang on a second. Did you have a Godfather question? I have played it. Not much. I suck at pinball. You know, people walk in and think I'm like this world-class tournament player. I, I suck at video games. I suck at pinball, and I rarely play it. There's been a lot of times I go to Expo, and I haven't even played a game. You know, it's my industry. It's not my hobby. You know, mailman doesn't come home from work and go for a walk. Well, yeah, but, you know, you're a little touched in the head. And, and Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, talking about pin sides, we are a lot on the technical part on pin sides. How do you keep the fun or, or the energy to help people? Uh, there are a lot of times they don't even respond. Or I'd rather I'd, they don't respond. Well, a friend of mine uh, asked me about that here some years ago on Rec Games Pinball. He helped a couple of people. And uh, now I don't know if his email went through it. I don't know if his help was good. And I don't know the whole program. But, you know, he was kind of pissy that, the you know, they didn't uh, bow down and thank him and send him money and I don't know what all. And he asked, he said, doesn't it bother you when, you know, you help somebody and they disappear? I said, no, we're done. If they disappear, their game's going. I don't need my email doubled. You know, we're cool. <laughs> You know, it's the same like people ask, well, why did that happen? Well, for fixed, uh, I quit there. I don't care wh how we got there. I just want to fix it. <laughs> Any more questions? Otherwise, going to be resorting to dirty jokes. Actually, we do. Or I do, at least. What? Well, Oli and Lena get married, and uh, they go on their honeymoon. 
So Monday morning, Lena's back in the secretarial pool. And of course, the first coffee break, all the secretaries gather around and they want to find out, you know, how, how old, how's old Oli in the sack? You know? And she says, Veil girls, I tell you all night long, it was up and down and in and out and up and down and in and out. Don't ever get a room next to an elevator. Oh, we got a question. Yes, sir. Oh, Joe? Or who? Over the last, say, 10 years, has there been a trend in what's making more money uh, at the arcade where you're getting more pinball or, or more billiards or video games? You know, yeah, well, I've only got one video game right now. i got a multi-cade. And because uh, the, the video games that make money, you know, have gotten up in the obscene uh, price range of buying and you're not going to make that back. You know, and it's gone back and forth. You know, when I was first out there, we had air hockey was big for a year and a half. Football was big for a few years. Had a little video game fad in the mid 70s. Had the big video game fad. You know, the mid 80s were trying to just stay alive. You know, now I'm trying to have that niche market with pinball. And uh, but, you know, and, uh it's always a uh, pool and pinball has always been a pretty good complement to each other. The only thing is post COVID though, that really screwed me over. I had a 48 year history wiped out. Yeah. I used to have an idea because I was close twice and I used to have an idea, you know, I'm going to be busy this weekend. Uh, it's probably being uh, slow or this is going to be happening or this. I, I got no idea what's going to happen anymore. You know, when I think it's going to be busy, nobody's around. When I think it's going to be dead, people come in. It's just, it's just all over the map. Yeah. And plan your bills out with that crap going on. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, well, again, I was saying the COVID messed that all up. Many years ago, heavy rain, heavy snow, super hot, super cold. It either drive them in or drive them out. There'd be no in between. But like I said, now it's just all over the map. I just don't know what's going to happen. Now, the only thing that has changed, you know, up until probably the late 70s, it wasn't uncommon to have somebody show up in skis, snowmobile, or horses. But that that's kind of died off. Oh, it's nice to see somebody on the parking lot. <laughs> we need more questions here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start uh, telling Randy. Randy I have jokes. a question for you. Oh, yes, sir. You've been around, well, the block in this industry for. Hey, I don't care what you heard about Michelle. There wasn't a word of it that was true. That's still the best month of my life. So. <laughs> Oh, she had every, everything. Attention deficit disorder, hyperactive. I mean, it was the only thing I made a mistake of falling in love with a damn thing, and I knew it wasn't going to last. But that was July, or yeah, July of 96. It's still the best month of my life. And I had a friend ask me, my internet provider asked me, well, you know, what if you find a, a girlfriend again or get married again or something, you know, and you start comparing them? I said, well, what's worse? What if I die and not knowing I had the best? <laughs> Michelle! Anyway, so it seems the pinball market is, at the moment, kind of saturated. Lots of manufacturers, lots of lots of games being cranked out. Um, not so many people with plenty of money to buy all these games, so distributors are being stuck. Are we heading for a crash? I don't know if it's a crash. There is a serious correction, but there's so many things going on. There's probably too many games being made for the market that's out there. The market that's out there has changed. All the, all the free money has disappeared. And there's like, you know, four or five things going on that, uh, you know, how do you nail it down to, you know, one thing? But, yeah, this obviously, you know, like I say, we're in for a serious correction. There's no denying that. You know, and who's all going to survive or not, uh, you know, the days of the $15,000 pins might be over. Everybody's leaving? I haven't, the uh, last turn I bought was uh, Walking Dead. You know, they've got, I just, I point blank don't have the money. But there are some, you know, I wouldn't mind having a, a Godzilla, especially that new uh, black and uh, white one. Because that's when you're a kid watching Godzilla, you know, they're guy in a rubber suit, they you know, stomping on buildings. It was in black and white. I mean, it's great. You know, Raymond Burroughs on there with them little tiny Japanese girls. And... Uh-oh, we got a question in back. Careful, she won't give you the microphone back. 
Hey, Lloyd. Uh, Hello. I wanted to know, it just popped up in my mind, did you ever get back into your Gmail account? I remember a couple months ago I, I was talking to you at the shop and you were having issues getting into your Facebook account for SS Billiards. <laughs> See, I don't remember that. I know the Gmail's working. It is working. Okay, good. You were, seemed really frustrated the last time we talked about it. Oh, some of the high-tech stuff really drives me nuts because I get the weirdest problems, and then the computer people usually can't figure it out. And mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, hey, I don't remember the incident, but I do know for a fact because uh, I've got uh, – yeah, I forgot the Gmail address, but I've also got uh, the two other email addresses, but I know Gmail is working because the American Pinball stuff usually comes in on that. Or, you know, like uh, your YouTube uh, – how your you know YouTube videos have done for the month or – you know, different things like that, or how my, uh, you know, uh, my Google web page, you know, how, you know, how many people have accessed it, how many people called, and things like that, all the crap I don't care about. It's just delete, 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 delete. <laughs> Good to see you, Lloyd. Anyway, well, whatever the hell is going on, apparently we got passed. Say, wait, you people can't go. Yeah, hey Lloyd. What do you think the future of pinball is with like um, everything going to micro circuit boards and 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 not pa non pass through circuit boards with with repair? So like Ninja Apocalypse out there is an incredible game. The entire underside of the playfield is one gigantic circuit board, like. That's cool till you got to replace that thing. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, do we all just need to start getting into micro soldering, or do we just accept the fact that you have to buy a four thousand dollar circuit board to repair a game? Yeah, or find somebody that's got the skills for uh, surface mount. You know, the thing I always thought, and I was you know curious why you know the manufacturers haven't done it. You know, you can have your board in the head, your little computer in the head running it, but you should have these little stamps around the play field. And like have one have a stamp for the slingshot switches, and uh, you know because now the swing the slingshot switch closes tells the computer hey we got closed computer tells the uh, slingshot coil to fire fires well see if you had that little stamp there doing it the stamp had uh, oh the slingshot switch closed fire and then tell the computer what it did that would simple simplify a hell of a lot of things eliminate probably half the problems that could go wrong it, you wouldn't need that huge board under the play field I hate like hell to think of changing out one of them i mean the average person can have trouble with uh, two or three connectors what are you gonna do with 40 connectors then that'd be what that nice lady was talking about not blowing stuff up <laughs> oh and that's one thing too you know if you do uh if you are doing anything with the boards or anything pictures notes and label them a friend of mine was working on a corvette and of course ever helpful you know how nice i can be when i'm talking to somebody uh, he was learning about ribbon cables. They're a gray cable, and they got a red stripe on one side, and that goes to pin one each end. Well, he works with machinery where all this stuff is keyed, and you can't plug it in wrong. And that was a game he had, had an actual fire in the game, and he actually burned part of his ceiling. And, of course, he's telling me, uh, you know, he's like, but Lloyd, it was a brand new board. And, of course, you know, I was trying to be caring and sympathetic, and I'm like, not anymore! <laughs> What are you buying these things by the dozen? <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to learn pinball repair. It's another thing to be throwing boards at every time you do something stupid. But, oh, that was precious. And he still loves me. He was going to be here this uh, week, too. And, and, unfortunately, I finally got a text from him today. He disappeared. And uh, he's in the hospital with COVID, of all things. So I'm really worried about that because he's a nice guy. And I don't mind if the assholes die. But, you know, I don't want to lose any of the good people. Yes, sir. Do you ever remember operating a uh, Williams Pin uh, space mission or space odyssey? No, no, my no, my dad's arcade probably had them. Okay, this See, I, I quit working for my dad in '72. That's when we uh, okay bought these, SS billiards and this game came out in 1976. Uh, as yeah. a matter of fact, I asked Tim Arnold what was his most successful pinball machine. He ever operated during his uh, days in the uh, arcade business in Michigan, and he uh, thought about 
for a moment, and five seconds later, he said to me, space mission made him a ton of money yep. because of the, the uh, play field layout. The average ball time was rather short, had a great, tremendous amount of player appeal. It was just a very successful game. Yeah. So, I don't, like, I'm pretty sure my dad had one, but I don't know how it went. But see, even this stuff can vary from, you know, area to area, location to location. Like in my place, uh, up until I was buying my own games when they're all mechanical, I kind of got, you know, started buying stuff when it went solid state. But Gottlieb ruled the roost for years, and then uh, and also into the solid state era. Uh, while the last uh, bally pin I had at that time was uh, Kiss. Nobody liked the bally pins. While down in my sister's arcade in Minneapolis, nobody liked the golly pins. Everybody liked the bally pins. And, of course, see, so many times, you know, I see on pin sites, somebody will post, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to put some pins on an arcade or I'm going to put them in a bar or something or I'm going to open it. What pin should I get? Yeah, your customers will let you know. You know, you don't buy the crap you like. You buy the crap that makes money. I'm never passionate about this stuff. You know, to me, it's the cash box. That'll that cash box never lies. Oh, just just a second, Randy. We got a microphone holder up here. Hey there. Um. So, is your dog still around? How's she doing? Prada. And, or, yeah. No. Oh, oh I'm April. Sorry. Are you gonna get an, another pooch? <laughs> yeah, that was a mistake. I really rethought that one. <laughs> Because I'm getting kind of old, and I didn't think I really wanted another dog. But so many people love Prada. I mean, there's people who came in just to play with Prada. She'd roll over, want her chest rubbed and everything else. She's probably one of the best things I ever added to the business. And uh, and I, I, got, I get stupid about once every 25 years. This was a big one. Oh, my God. I haven't done the puppy thing in forever. Most of the dogs I've had have been a year or two old. And then I get this little hellion shark NATO thing. <laughs> when I got her, she was three and three-quarter pounds. When she has 7.7 .7 pounds, we're at the vet, and the vet awaited her. And I asked, well, how come when she's stomping on my head, she's in the middle of the night, she's 200 pounds? And then all you got to do is twitch, and the Sharknado starts in. And otherwise, you know, middle of the night, all of a sudden, it's like the flying Walenda comes flying out of nowhere and just lands on my head. And, uh, and she's having a great time. The only thing I can think, and she's the first fuzzy dog I've had, so now we've been to the uh, groomer toys. But uh, the only thing that positive that I can think of that's come out of this, that if somebody else would have ended up with her, oh, man, I saved somebody else a world of hurt. <laughs> but she is, her name is Snowflake. She's pure white. When I got her, she was three and three quarter pounds. Now she's 9.6. But she is a little sweetheart. But there's, oh, uh, and my sister told me, you know, you got to get a handle on this. You know, you got to set some boundaries. So I sat her down, and I'm like, you know, Snowflake, we got to have some boundaries here. And she looks up at me. You're shitting me, right? Off she went, zoom, zooming. And then my sister was on me another time, too, that, you know, you got to get a handle on this. I'm like, why? We're having too much fun. You know, she's being a dog. And uh, she's got probably as big a fan base as not bigger than Prada had. Yeah, people just love her. The only thing I got to keep her pinned in behind the counter I was originally leaving a run, but if somebody comes in or goes out, she takes off. There's nothing more fun than three, four people chasing you through the parking lot. And she does understand she can get killed out there. Get 20 bucks from him, Joe. Jackson, get 20 bucks from him. Whoa. Well, I guess we got to start telling the Jackson jokes. <laughs> Oh, oh, I've got one. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got, you know, the LTG, Mug Me, Pinball Expo, 40th uh, anniversary. In the back, in order, the companies I help. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Joe, buddy. Glad you can make Any more questions? Jonathan, got a customer. Yeah, we got we got to get the microphone back to you. Yeah, with the other bodies. <laughs> you didn't ask a question. What's your question? <laughs> Boy, we really screwed that one up, didn't we? 
fault. That's why I said we. Jeez, you got a free mug. Just sit down and shut up. <laughs> so, um. Down, 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 down. Thank you. I hope you more, like your mug. On a more pinball related note, if, um. Uh oh, pinball related. Hey, this is good. This is going to be a pinball question. This will This will be good. Uh, it seems that some manufacturers are doing what they can to bring down the cost of manufacturing their games. <laughs> They're getting lighter. They're getting noisier. Uh, are they becoming, lighter? Are they becoming disposable, or are they still going to be around for? They've years always later? been disposable. People have decided to collect, uh, a, you know, get a hobby and collect an item that was made for commercial use to be used for two, three years and junked. But the operators, do they throw them away after two or three years? Used to. Okay. You know, with the with the income of pinball dropping, you know, like from 2000 on, they were just wholesaling them out. I mean, there was a lot of them got cut up and the board sold and everything else. But now isn't the resale part of the, uh, you know. That's more urban sell. legend. A lot of people think it's, hey, it's so great. I can operate a pinball machine. I get the coin drop and then I can sell it later. Well, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. Don't count on making money after the fact. You're making money before or you're screwed. Well, I don't, but I mean that that was the the theory. That's where pinball started. Well, yeah, but I mean it's the same with the Van Gogh. You know, he painted uh, or, or Charles Wilson, uh, Russ, or Charles Russell. He painted paintings to pay his bar bill. He didn't know that uh, you know 100 years later they'd sell for 20 million. You know, the manufacturers never intended this stuff to be around this long. They weren't making for collectors. The collectors. Uh, the collectors have uh, pretty much where we are today. Well, Williams closed. Stern, and I yeah, I would praise Gary Stern. I mean, the worst decade ever in coin-op. He kept Pimble alive. This is a great man. But the, the it's really the collectors that turn things around. Well, Williams closed. I was buying up rubber rings and everything else because we didn't know how long this stuff was going to be available. And everybody thought that when Williams closed that you could get any pie for, part for any Williams game that was ever made. And somebody brought that up on pins, uh, on Red Games Pinball. Well, what do I tell a lady when her uh, visor does, motor doesn't work on uh, pinball? What am I going to tell her now? And so what'd you tell her 14 years ago when you couldn't get them? Well, Williams had a 13% overrun of game-specific parts, and then they were gone. They were gone. There is more available now today because of the collectors, because of the hobby, because of the parts dealers and stuff. There's a more available now than when these companies were, uh, you know, great when they were uh, active. And you know, what all do the people sitting here? You know, like I say, Gary Stern saved pinball. No ifs, ands, or buts about here or that. But it's the people sitting here today that made pinball what it is. They kept it going. Uh-oh. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so what's it like working with Butch Peel? How's he doing over at Chicago Gaming? Uh, he's not with them anymore. Oh, he's gone. He left. Yeah, some of school. And I know he had, like, gallstones or something, had him removed. And Well, he is retired Air Force. And I don't know if he's going to pop up again. And I mean, I really wish he'd, uh, you know, pop up somewhere because the best manuals in the world. I mean, you look at his Pulp Fiction manual. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is one of the best. Man I don't know what JJP was thinking of getting rid of him. Because, you know, you look at, uh, you know, what is it, the Guns N' Roses manual. It's half done. It's incomplete. Mistakes. And most of their manuals since then have not been, you know, compared to Butch Peel's days. I mean, his manuals are the best. And then the online, uh, you know, things, because uh, a lot of companies have gone to the online rather than printing them uh, because they can update it easier online. Instead, once it's printed, you can't update it. You know, Williams had a lot of addendums and stuff, but not always. There's a lot of mistakes in the older manuals. But, yeah, Butch, Butch is the greatest. And uh, like I say, as far as I know right now, he's kind of like a little bit of hiatus, but I hope he pops up somewhere. Because, you know, barrels, pardon? Nah. But we, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, I was thinking that I was even hoping that Barrels of Fun with Labyrinth or uh, American Pinball, that somebody would pick them up and use them for manuals. Because his, his are second to none. I mean, he, he is the king of manuals. But again, too, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, what the deal is with Chicago gaming. I don't know if he got tired, if he got burned out. I know he lives in New Mexico. So, I mean, that's a heck of a trip every once in a while to go up to Chicago and back. 
I mean, it's like Steve Ritchie when he's uh, with Stern way back when he lived in uh, California, ended up at uh, Matt Cristiano's ranch, San Diego, and twice a year he used to drive to Chicago. And then he'd stop in Black River Falls, Wisconsin, and motocross bike with his Martin brother, Mark. But, I mean, you know, anytime, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons Jersey Jack moved to Chicago because, you know, a company, uh, there's people you, can, you can't get rid of, you can't afford to lose, and there's people you can. And that's why, you know, Jersey Jack had the Chicago office, and they finally moved there because their most important people were there, and they weren't going to move. So, but uh, like I say, Butch, Butch is bar none the best manual guy there ever was, and I hope he pops up again somewhere. We got Sasha here. His manuals aren't bad either. I mean, uh, Paul Fisher was at 320 apart. pages of scores. I mean, he had that uh, that uh, shot layout of thing that he did to begin with. What was it like 20 or 23 pages or something? I mean, Jesus. He really, uh, you know, and, and I was all excited when they picked him up too because he felt really bad when uh, JJP let him go. And then the following Monday, Chicago Gaming picked him up because he emailed me right away. You know, we're going to be working together again. And that's why I was sad when I heard he left you. Know, I emailed him right away and you know, wish him nothing but the best, even if it ain't with Chicago Gaming. I hate to lose him from pinball. That that would be a big tragedy. Ooh, a new a – new, uh, we'll get to you eventually, Randy. Well, sooner or later we'll <laughs> – Not our fault. <laughs> Damn school teacher sneaking in here. You had mentioned how some of the parts uh, the manufacturers had a short supply of. Was there a machine that you ever had to just dispose of because you couldn't get it repaired? No. See, I'm back from the old EM days outside of the plastic score reels. You can fix everything in there with a spot welder. You know, it's amazing what you can, can invent at 2 or 3 in the morning. And, I, and I've MacGyvered a hell of a lot of crap through the years, but, you know, to me, you know, it comes back to square one. I can make them pretty later, but right now it's got to be working and making money. And also I don't want it, you know, half-assed uh, that, you know, there's uh, features or something that players aren't getting their value for. You know, if I'm working on something, no matter what I got to do to get it going, no matter how screwy an invention I got to put in there, you know, it's got to be working for for me anyway. It's got to, you know, the players got to be getting their value. It's got to be right. It might not look the prettiest, but it's got to work. Say, could you get a microphone back to Randy before he falls asleep back there? Um, as you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of yours. I actually subscribe to your OnlyFans page, and um, I. Just, yeah, but I've got all those pictures of Colson and your wife up there. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? Oh, it's good stuff. Anyway. Hey, Jonathan, good seeing you. If I don't see you before, have a safe trip home, my friend. Scott's leaving too? Oh, good. So Before I left, because I that's I why got, you wanted to give me twenty bucks because I kicked you off my OnlyFans page. <laughs> so you admit it. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm proud I got those pictures of Colson and your wife. <laughs> hey, I don't know where the midget come from, but she, that was a called, cool addition to that bedroom Peloton. scene. Anyway, uh, she does love to ride it. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to thank you publicly before I leave because, as you know, you're the reason that I'm actually in this hobby. When I got my first machine, you were the one that, that gave me the courage to slide the glass off and fix it. You talked me through it on the phone. I've never forgotten that. And every time I uh, restore a game or I fix a game, I thank Lloyd Olson for that. So I want to thank you. And that's why that's why I want to give you a hug. And I'm sorry I invaded your space. But that's why I really love you, man. So thank so, you very so much. I made one mistake. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. And I'm going to go sleep now. <laughs> Be cool. Night, Randy. Sleep good. Yeah, he's crazy. He wanted everybody to friend him on Facebook, so everybody ran in and friended his wife. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, and hard to believe that's why our school system is in the shape it's in. He's a school teacher. <laughs> yeah, you should have stuck around, Randy. Call me a buzz killer. <laughs> so.
What else we got going on here? Just to add to the praise, uh, I got a Houdini game probably like five years ago. I had no idea what, what I was doing. It crashed the play field. I had it vertical and it went straight down off the rails. And, and you were there at like 2 a.m. Eastern, well, it was central for you. And you were helping me out and talking me through it. I think you called the medics for me. But like you you were fantastic. And, and again, oh, and that, thank you. just to add praise, like – all of us have Lloyd stories, I think. So, so thank you. Some of them you can even say in public. Some you know? could be printable. Yeah, you remember you. to buy my book when it comes out, My Life as a Pinball Tech and a Lover. But, you know, the, the chapters, the the stories that I can't tell right now that can't be published, they'll come out after I'm gone and uh, there's no repercussions. No, but that's the one thing, you know, like some of these companies do, they don't understand what they're getting when they bring me on board. You know, it's anywhere it's 9, 10 in the morning till God knows 2, 3 in the next morning. And uh, people walking in off the street, uh, you know, usually I'm rocking three or four phones, uh, two email addresses, you know, phone calls, people stopping in. I mean, that's a heck, heck of a lot of good deal when, you know, most of them are just, you know, like nine to five and weekdays and uh, the hell with you. But not everybody like loves me. <laughs> oh, well, I got over it. <laughs> this is john salvador he's from north carolina a another he if anybody goes back to the old rec games pinball days he was trailer park trash or whatever the hell he had going on i used to make fun of him yeah if you want to call john you gotta give him time to answer the phone because he's got to leave the mobile home and climb up the telephone pole 30 40 feet to get to his telephone <laughs> And he, uh, he levels his uh, kitchen table with a telephone book. And, oh, geez, there was just some rip-roaring uh, times then before all the trolls overran uh, Rec Games Pinball and destroyed it. Them were great times. That's the trouble uh, being old, too, is I've got to live through a lot of things when they were good, and now they're not. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, green side of the grass. Well, until I win the lottery, then I'm out of here. I'm going to be on an exotic beach somewhere on a chase lounge, coconut with tropical drink, paper umbrella, and a bendy straw, watching sharks get swimmers. One an hour would be nice. But no, i got to work till I die. I'll never forget my parents. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Hey, well, excuse me, too, before we get into the people that uh, need mugs, we got one guy, he was, he was going to share his room, and then he, he uh, tried to rent out his room because his friend got pneumonia and couldn't make it. Is that guy here tonight? Because I'm hoping to find him because I posted on Pinside. I said, well, if you catch me for a mug, I'll give you one for your friend too. I mean, it feels bad the guy got sick and couldn't make it to Expo. Poor guy. Sorry, Dan, didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, but all the mugs you give away without questions, you got to reimburse me for. <laughs> Didn't I pay for them? No. No, that five hundred. That five hundred bucks was hush money. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> so, any more questions? Anything going on? Well, and I guess we may as well wrap it up. I really want to thank you people for coming tonight, and we gave, came in the name of Pimal, but we're leaving as friends. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much.